Chris here, registered nurse, certified clinical nurse leader with my focus being research. All right, check this out. And be sure to stick around because I am going to get personal and vulnerable. Check out this video of me taking my blood pressure twice using the breathing method. All right, so check this out. Just sitting down, first blood pressure. Here we go. Pretty big difference. The lower number is still pretty high, but after a minute of deep breathing, it just goes to show you that you can lower your blood pressure significantly by inhaling, getting as much air in those lungs, squeezing that vagus nerve, lowers your blood pressure. I will say that I just had some caffeine, I exercised, I did Insanity this morning with Sean T. So uh, I'm still sweating from that, my blood pressure's up from that, so it's normally not that high, but look how quickly you can get your blood pressure down. Amazing results. Comment down below if you tried this method and it works for you. What you saw me do when I was taking my blood pressure the second time, taking giant deep breaths, I was stimulating the vagus nerve that runs in between my lungs. The vagus nerve, when stimulated, activates the parasympathetic nervous system. You may have heard this part of the nervous system referred to as rest and digest. When activated, our blood vessels do just that. They relax, thus decreasing our blood pressure. I'm around doctors and other healthcare professionals all the time in my work, but no matter how much time I spend around clinicians, I still get anxious at my doctor's office when they're about to take my blood pressure. Referred to as white coat, I can just feel my blood pressure going up. I don't know exactly why. I do know it is something deep down, probably has something to do with me not wanting to get bad news, in this case, high blood pressure. Sometimes I almost feel embarrassed by my high blood pressure. Physiologically, this is what happens. I know this. My thoughts trigger the fight or flight mechanism in me. I release catecholamines, adrenaline, and cortisol, and my blood pressure goes up. Sometimes really up. And whatever the reason my blood pressure goes up in these situations, it really doesn't matter. It's up when I would hope that it wouldn't be up. Because high blood pressure in the doctor's office triggers a whole host of other things. For one, you get that follow-up phone call where the nurse wants me to check my blood pressure at home. And maybe you get put on high blood pressure email list too. Unsubscribe. After repeated high blood pressures at the doctor's, then comes the medication discussion. Nope, not taking any meds. The point I'm trying to make is this, that blood pressure readings are not an accurate depiction of what my blood pressure is. And you know what's funny? I think I even get a little white coat when I'm alone, in my room, taking my blood pressure. Not a soul around, just me. I can feel the same catecholamine release feeling, trying to talk my body into giving me a, a great blood pressure reading. Then BAM! Still a bit high. Less than the doctor's office, but still not that quote, ideal range. Why am I like this? Who knows? My wife and friends would say I'm passionate or intense. Yep, that's me. If there was a way someone could take my blood pressure without me knowing, I'm almost certain my blood pressure would be what I always wanted it to be, based on what the establishment says it should be. Side note, my grandma lived to 101 years old with blood pressures in the 140s over 80s. So there's that. The fact that I can have such a huge impact on my blood pressure by simply performing the breathing technique I demonstrated makes me feel better and gives me a sense of control over my health, which was something I felt that I lacked, at least when it came to what my blood pressure would be at any given moment. If you like what you've heard so far, or just think I'm a bit crazy, drop me a like and subscribe. I'm willing to bet there are many more people out there just like me that when they see a high BP, they freak out a bit. And how many people are falsely diagnosed with blood pressure and put on medications that they might not need? Comment down below if you can relate. Many of us do have clinically significant high blood pressure though, and over time it can pose some real dangerous and harmful effects. Stroke to name one. So the breathing method I just described, adopting it into your daily routine many times a day would be helpful. 
Deep breathing can dramatically lower your blood pressure. That's proven. Making it a habit, now that can be a challenge. But you probably need to do more. Maybe your blood pressure is more related to your diet, the food you're eating or not eating. What if I were to tell you that you can alter your blood pressure by eating more of something, more of one thing. If you know what sodium is, and I know you know what potassium is, that one thing I just mentioned, it's potassium. Are you familiar with the relationship between the two? Ever heard of sodium potassium pump? This pump is found in the plasma membrane of almost every human cell. It does its best to keep a balance between sodium and potassium. That can be hard to do when our diets are so full of salt. Too much sodium and we retain water. When we retain water, we have more volume and higher blood pressure. Potassium counteracts that effect by promoting sodium excretion through urination and blood vessel wall relaxation. Less volume, lower blood pressure. We need more potassium in our diets, period. Let's start with the recommended daily amounts needed. Adult men, 19 years and older, 3,400 milligrams of potassium. Adult women, 19 years and older, 2,600 milligrams. Moving on, what foods have the highest amount of potassium? Oranges, potatoes, sweet potatoes, apricots, kiwis, spinach, and cantaloupe are all high in potassium. As I made my way through this list, you were probably thinking, what about bananas? One medium-sized banana will provide 422 milligrams of potassium. But in contrast, one cup of cooked spinach will give you 1,180 milligrams. Along the same lines of fruits and veggies are leafy greens, like spinach, as I just mentioned, but also kale and Swiss chard. One cup of Swiss chard gives you 960 milligrams of potassium. A great way to get these things into your diet is through smoothies or cooking them in your omelet. You can hardly taste them when blended or cooked. More about smoothies. As I mentioned, an easy way to ingest a lot of these unpalatable foods, kale, for example. Not a fan, but when mixed into a smoothie, you don't even know it's there. I like to blend Greek yogurt, bananas, kale, oranges, berries, and even an avocado. By the time I've finished my shake, I've already consumed 33% of my daily potassium intake. Greek yogurt is also a great source of potassium. One cup gives you about 300 milligrams. Fish is also a great way to get potassium, but not all fish are created equal. I live on the west coast and sadly salmon season is closed and has been closed going on year two now. Urgh. But salmon is not the only way to get loads of potassium. I buy mackerel in the can through Amazon. It has an extremely long shelf life and it's delicious. One can of mackerel contains over 369 milligrams of potassium. If you're fortunate enough to have access to salmon, half a filet, approximately 178 grams, has over 684 milligrams of potassium. The last food item, very affordable, you can get at any market and easy to add to your diet, potatoes. And here's a little secret about potatoes you might not know. The potatoes need to be prepared the correct way to take advantage of all the amazing potassium benefits they have. All you gotta do is leave the skin on. The skin is chuck full of nutrients. It's where most of the nutrients are. One medium potato with skin contains as much as 952 milligrams of potassium. Boom, goes the dynamite. Well, I hope you got something out of this video today. After hearing my story, perhaps you won't put as much pressure on yourself when you are sitting in your doctor's office waiting to get your blood pressure taken. Or if you're like me, it'll still happen. But do the deep breathing method I described. Instead of hearing your doc say, we're gonna have to monitor your blood pressure, you'll start hearing him or her say, wow, you've made some impactful changes. Your blood pressure is great. What's your secret? <laughs> That's what mine says now. And all I do is take some really deep breaths before that cuff squeezes my arm. The nurse who takes your blood pressure might get a little weirded out though because it looks like you're hyperventilating and might even explode. Lots of funny reactions. Embarrassing, but also humbling. Or maybe you'll add some of the potassium rich foods I described, which will be more a long-term sustainable approach to lowering your blood pressure. If you like what you heard, please drop me a like, thumbs up, and subscribe. Nurse Chris out.